In this video, we're going to write a C program to split an array at a specific index into two arrays. So for example, if we have an array like this, int array is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Here we have an array of 10 elements. We could split this array at the index 3. That would be this index here. If we split the array at this index, we would want to create two new arrays. One array that contains these elements here, and then a second array that contains these elements here. We would call that splitting the array at a specific index. So we'll create a function to do that. The function will be called split, and the function will have a void return type because it doesn't actually need to return anything. The function will have many parameters. The first parameter will be the array itself. We'll have int star array. We'll also pass in the length of the array. So we'll have int length. We'll also need to pass in the index at which we want the split to take place. So we'll have int split index for that index. Now we want to return two arrays and the lengths of those arrays from this function. To do that, we're going to use pass by pointer. So for example, to effectively return the length of the first subarray, we're going to have a parameter int star length one, where length one is a pointer to an int. What we're going to pass to the function is the memory address of an int variable. And the function is going to dereference that pointer to that int variable to actually store the length of the subarray into that variable. So the two arrays that we're going to create are going to be dynamically allocated on the heap. And we're going to use a pointer to an int to refer to them. Now to return a pointer to an int, we're going to have a pointer to a pointer to an int to again use pass by pointer. So we're going to use these two pointer parameters to return the length of the first subarray and a pointer to the first subarray itself on the heap. We'll use the same technique for the second subarray. We'll have int star star subarray two and int star length two. Because we're using dynamically allocated memory, we're going to have to include stdlib.h. So we can use the functions malloc and free. So actually calling the function will look like this. Down here, we'll create some variables to help us. We'll have a length variable that's going to store the length of the array. And then we'll declare some variables that are going to be used to store the values that are being effectively returned from the function via pass by pointer. So we'll have int sublength one is equal to zero and sublength two is equal to zero. And these two variables are going to be used to store the lengths of the two subarrays. Then we'll have two pointer to int variables, int star sub array one is equal to null and star sub array two is equal to null. And these two pointer variables are going to store the memory addresses of the arrays that we're going to dynamically allocate on the heap. We're going to pass to the function the memory address of these variables. What we're passing is a pointer to a pointer variable. So that's why we have these pointer to a pointer parameters here and here. So let's call the function now. We'll have split and then the array, the length of the array, the split index, which we'll say is going to be three. And then we'll pass in the memory address of sub array one the memory address of this pointer to an int here. We'll also pass in the memory address of sublength one, the memory address of subarray two, and the memory address of sublength two. So here we're using pass by pointer to effectively return four things from the function. Let's actually implement the function now. So we'll copy this and then down here, we'll provide the function definition. And the first thing we'll do is find the lengths of our two subarrays. So the length of the first subarray is actually going to be equal to the split index. For example, if the split index is three, that means the elements at the indexes zero, one, and two from the original array need to be in the first subarray. That is three elements, which is our split index, three. So here we'll have star length one is equal to the split index. Here 
we're actually accessing the int variable that length one is pointing to. So we're dereferencing the pointer to go get access to the int variable that length one stores the memory address of. And in that variable, we're storing the split index as the length of the first subarray. Now the length of the second subarray is going to be the amount of remaining elements in the original array. So if we take the total number of elements in the original array and subtract the number of elements in the first subarray, that will give us the number of elements in the second subarray. So here we'll have star length two is equal to length minus split index. So we're taking the total number of elements in the original array and we're subtracting the number of elements that are going to be in the first subarray to give us the number of elements in the second subarray. And again, we're dereferencing the pointer to the int that's going to store that second subarray's length. Now that we know the lengths of the two subarrays, we can dynamically allocate space to store each subarray using malloc. So next we'll have star subarray one is equal to malloc size of int multiplied by star length one. So malloc is going to allocate a block of memory on the heap to store our first subarray. And the size of that block of memory in bytes is given by the first argument here. What we supply as a first argument is the size in bytes that it takes to store an int multiplied by the number of ints in our first subarray. So the length of our first subarray. We're again dereferencing the length one pointer to get that int length value. Now malloc is going to return a pointer. It's going to return a memory address for that block of memory. We want to store that in the int pointer that subarray one is itself pointing to. Because remember, subarray one is a pointer to a pointer to an int. And so here, when we dereference subarray one, what we're doing is accessing that pointer to an int. And we're gonna store that memory address for our array on the heap into that pointer to an int that subarray one is pointing to. Now we'll do the same thing for subarray two. We'll have star subarray two is equal to malloc size of int multiplied by star length two. And so for subarray two, we're going to allocate enough space to store length two number of ints, which is the length of that second subarray. So now what we can do is copy the values from the original array to these two subarrays. And we could use some loops to do that. Here we'll have for int i is equal to zero, and we're going to use i as a counter variable. We're gonna take i from zero up until the length of the first subarray. So up until what length one is pointing to. And we're gonna increment by one. So next we'll copy each value from the original array at the index i to the first subarray at the index i. So we'll have star subarray one at the index i is equal to the original array at the index i. So here we're gonna copy the values from index zero up until the length of the first subarray from the original array to our subarray. Now here, we're first dereferencing our pointer to that first subarray. So we can actually use our array indexing notation to access the elements of this array. So next we'll copy the values from the original array into the second subarray. So here we're gonna have four, int i is equal to zero, i is less than star length two, i plus plus. So again, we're gonna take the counter variable i from zero up until the length of our second subarray. And we'll have star subarray two at the index i is equal to the array at the index split index plus i. So here we're using split index as an offset into the original array. So we wanna copy the values into the subarray at the indexes zero up until the length of the second subarray because those are the indexes of that array. 
but we want to copy the values from the second portion of the original array. In other words, the values from the split index onwards. So here we have split index plus i to account for that. Because if the split index was 3 and the subarray 2 length was, let's say, 7, then we would want to copy the elements at the indexes 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 from the original array. So now this function should work. Up here, we're calling the function. Afterwards, though, we should output the subarray lengths and their elements to ensure that the split was successful. So here we'll have printf sublength1 colon percent d backslash n, and we'll output the first subarray's length. And then we'll create a loop to go through the elements of that first subarray and output them. So we'll take i from 0 up until the length of the first subarray by 1, and we'll use it as a counter variable to output the elements. We'll have printf subarray 1 at the index percent d is equal to percent d, and we'll output the index i and the value at that index given by subarray 1 at the index i. And this here will loop through and output the elements in the first subarray. We'll copy this logic and we'll do the exact same thing with the second subarray. So here we'll have sublength 2 and sublength 2 and sublength 2, subarray 2 and subarray 2 because the logic is exactly the same. We just want to output the second subarray's length and then loop through and output the elements of the second subarray. We'll output a new line character just to separate the output of these two subarrays. And we'll do another one here. Now, because we're using dynamically allocated memory, we should free the dynamically allocated memory to prevent a memory leak when we're done working with it. So here we'll have free subarray one and free subarray two to free the dynamically allocated memory for our two subarrays. So now if we save, compile, and run our program, we'll be able to see that the array was split successfully. We can see that subarray one has a length of three and it has the elements one, two, three from our original array. The second subarray has the length seven and it has the elements four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten from the original array. So we have split the original array successfully at the index three. So this is how we can split an array at a specific index into two subarrays using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.